Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, okay. Uh, th um, thank you for joining uh, my presentation. Uh, again, my name is Alex Schluten. Uh, I'm here to present four tips that help you leverage your airflow pipelines. But it's more about four practical cases that help me in my uh, solving my tasks. So first of all, about me. As I said, Alex Schluten. Uh, I'm a data architect and data engineer. As a freelancer, I have to combine this role. Sorry, there's some background noise. Uh, I have six plus years working with Airflow. Uh, worked with all major versions starting from 1.7 to 2.7. Worked in different configuration, management environment, like on-premise and so on. Uh, so, yeah, have something to tell you. Uh, yeah, I know that uh, Previous presenters did a great job uh, explaining what Airflow is, but I have to ask how many of you uh, know already what Airflow is? Okay, and how many of you uh, created at least one DAG? Oh, perfect. Yeah, uh, but key, uh, key, key things about Airflow. It's orchestration tool. It's batch-oriented, so know about streaming. Uh, it's schedule oriented, uh, so uh, no even driving at least out of the box, and it, the workflow as a code. Um, so to to write your workflow, we have to write a Python code. Yeah, um, the, for those of you who don't know, the simplest way to add a DAG to Airflow is to write a Python script. Um, here is the code of the the simplest DAG possible. It doesn't do anything uh, on a daily basis. And uh, copy is just to Airflow DAX folder. And yeah, let's go to the tips. I just uh, have to do a quick introduction because most of my tips will be about uh, creating pipelines. The first tip is about uh, templated pipelines. So uh, in the data engineering world, there is a really often when you have a, a task for creating absolutely similar pipelines but for different entities. So code is pretty much the same, but you have to like did it for the different, I don't know, uh, IDs for different uh, properties and so on. Um, so um, as I said previously, so the, the easiest way possible is to create a DAG file. And if we have a similar pip pipelines, we have to, like, as the first thing, we have to, like, copy-paste all the code in the file, but it's the not convenient way. So how to do is uh, this in the better way. So um, as I said, Airflow is a code, and by default, it creates pipeline for every variable uh, in the global dictionary uh, of the type DAG. And by default, if you just create a DAG in a for loop, it will not go to the global dictionary. So you have to directly ingest it. So here is also the simplest way possible to create these templated pipelines, and DAG Factor will create it for you. Uh, it's just a custom thing uh, based on the configuration. How the configuration may look like? Obviously, uh, it's up to you, but I personally prefer for these cases create a CSV file. Probably is uh, about uh, like data engineering, looking on the structure table thing. But yeah, um, first three column in that configuration. Ah, first of all, I have to just uh, briefly explain what is about. Uh, this particular configuration is about to downloading um, just historical data for the blockchain DAOs. If you don't know what DAOs is, it's not a problem. It's, there are just uh, some proposals and uh, people voting for these proposals. There's proposal data and voting data. So we have to download both and calculate some metrics based, based on this information. So, um, yeah. Um, First three columns here are corresponding just to the properties that are ingested in these pipelines. And second one, second part is more interesting here. So basically, if you would calculate, here are 
10 DAOs, 10 columns, 10, da uh, 10 rows, 10 DAOs. And each of these columns creates a separate list of uh, DAGs for each DAO. So proposals create 10 DAGs for each DAO, votes create 10 DAGs for each DAO, but lifetime here is uh, creating only a single one and uh, with one task per each DAO, and I'll explain a bit why I did this. Uh, the, yeah. the reason why the last column, uh, the reason why the last column creates only one DAG is in the uh, properties of the proposals and votes column. It is start date. Whenever we download historical data from Airflow, it's a really convenient way to create a catch-up pipelines. For those of you who don't know, there is a property in the DAC folder that uh, like, really change your pipelines, it's called catch-ups. If you have never like, uh, used it, I really encourage you to try it because it uh, divides my experience with Airflow on before and after. Uh, so yeah, and whenever you like set this property in Airflow, it start creating task from this date. And uh, some of you may uh, notice that it's probably another option to create only single pipeline here with all these pipelines as the branches in this deck. But in that particular case, we need to uh, use the earliest possible start date, and that means that that will create a uh, number of tasks for all the past that will be just empty. So this, they will just pollute your metadata database, and it's really important to keep database as like I don't know as most performance as possible here. Uh, and for the lifetime task, we don't have such a problem. It's only create uh, one task for the uh, for the uh, just all the data, all the calculations. So that's it. What are the pros of this uh, tip? It's really easy to add a new entity. So basically, one line of configuration. It's that's it. It's less code. You wrote the code once. Add new entities. Add a new DAG. Uh, you, there is less chances to miss something because everything is in front of your face. You know already your configuration. Sometimes it's really the case when you just added a DAG for downloading proposals data and forget to add it for the voting and vice versa. Um, as I said, isolation, you can control start date. Each of your DAC is, uh, each of your pipeline is a separate DAC and uh, the problem uh, with uh, also one of the problem, if you will add DAG uh, as a, like uh, as as a new ent add a new entity um, in the DAG with multiple branches, uh, you will have to I don't know uh, do some workarounds to run all of this uh, task uh, from the past, um, and also. Uh, I can't stress enough the importance of the data validation in the engineering world. And if you wrote your data validation test once, it will be automatically covered. You do not need to do anything. So if you like noticed there were nothing uh, related to the data validation in my configuration, but data validation was already covered. Yeah, what are the cons? Uh, I did not find anything. I think it's a really great way to create your templated pipelines. If you have such a problem, I really encourage you to try it out. Uh, but it's slightly required to advanced understanding of Airflow. So what advanced? Because you like trying to ingest things into uh, scheduling. So sometimes, if you mess something up, it may cause like timeout exception for the uh, your scheduler. But if you figure out it once, uh, you will know what to do here. So, yeah, as I said, a really great way. I really encourage everyone to try it out. Second one is the echo delegation. So 
One of my clients uh, once asked me, Alex, I want to create uh, pipelines by myself. I don't want to bug you each time. I need to add something uh, in, the conf in the configuration or something else. So what uh, are the ways here? I did not want to give him permission to edit the code because, yeah, uh, yeah, just just to, to repository. He is not a technical guy, so I thought that it would be a nicer idea to uh, move this configuration file somewhere online. Uh, so I did it in the Google Sheet. Uh, so our scheduler just pick up all the configuration and create a DEX base on it. So that worked. Uh, pros of this is other people. Yeah. As, as as simple as it is, other people can create airflow ducts for you. You can focus on your job. And another, uh, not obvious, the changes are available without deployment. So once you change the configuration, scheduler will automatically pick that up and will save it, uh, and uh, will create all the ducts, all the necessary ducts. But uh, in the first previous, you should have to like do all your CI/CD cycle. So yeah. Uh, here are probably some of this, like some of the pros. But um, what are the cons? Uh, you making an external API call during the scheduling, so you have to make sure that this external API uh, are, have low latency and high availability. Because, as I said, it may cause uh, timeout exception that will be like that for the scheduling your pipelines. And um, some of you may guess that uh, adding a user experience to the, to the process of creating pipelines is uh, adding user to the creating pipelines is not a great idea because we need to handle this user experience. So whenever the very first time my customer tried to uh, create a pipeline, it failed. And uh, I added documentation, but it didn't help. Uh, then I added input data validation, so basically I had to separate the process of the grabbing data and validation data, then storing it as a separate file, and then schedule pick it up from the separate file, already validated one, and uh, yeah, the pipelines were created. But also it's not a stable process, so you have to uh, manage error notification because if something will fail, you want it to be uh, aware as soon as it possible. Yeah, uh, the last one I called lazy adaptation. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I had a case where we have to. Uh, one of my customers sold uh, the processing software. And basically, for person, for me, that means that I have to uh, download all the processing data. Basically, all of my pipelines looked, most of my pipelines looked like just grabbing the data from the processing pipeline, multiple processing pipelines, uh, multiple processing databases, and just created a pipeline uh, based on it. Uh, so, my mapping file. Uh, my like configuration just looked like a two columns, just name and the reference to the airflow connection. Uh, so I, I thought, why can I get rid of this file and just left uh, so just uh, during the scheduling, list all the connection and create a pipeline based on the uh, the ones with a certain prefix. And yeah, this is turned out a good idea. I get rid of this mapping and everything worked. This is fine. So pros are pretty simple. You know, have no additional mapping. But configuration can be lost because like uh, the list of your connections are stored in metadata DB and if you lost your metadata DB you will not know what to restore here. And you can't use additional properties because like you have known this configuration file. So um, honestly, you can use uh, configuration properties, but it's uh, like you have to work around this. Um, so yeah, uh, to, to sum up, 
this particular case is very uh, niche, I would say. Uh, it's really hard to find a way to implement this, but I just want to highlight that you may be creative with creating your pipelines. Uh, yeah, let's go to the last one. Uh, I call it pseudo event drawing, so it's one of also my client uh, asked me, Alex, I need to create an event drawing pipeline in Airflow and I don't want to hear now. So uh, my first thought was to create uh, just a pipeline with the fast uh, scheduling, like a one minute scheduling, and it will check the event queue and if there are events, uh, it will process the downstream, and if there are no, it will just skip it. Uh, it's a working idea, but it's a horrible idea. I don't recommend anyone to try it out because it pollutes your metadata DB, creates lots of empty tasks that you don't want it to see. Uh, so I thought about what could be other options. I actually, uh, we worked in the cloud, so every cloud has a service that allow you to execute uh, pieces of code based on events. In Google Cloud, it's called Google Function uh, or cloud, cloud Function. So uh, I thought, why can't I trigger uh, the, my pipeline via API based uh, on the event via cloud, via cloud function. So I googled and there is even a documentation in, uh, in, on Google site with the step-by-step -step guide how to do this. Uh, nothing too special about this. Just uh, event are sent in the pops up, also Google service handled by cloud function and yeah, we worked at that time in the cloud composer. It's also managed version of the Airflow. Uh, the pros, you have your event driving pipeline. It worked, it worked okay. It's basically the only thing that I have to uh, mention here is your pipeline have to be without schedule, uh, scheduling interval. So basically scheduler equals none. Uh, you are allowed to uh, trigger your pipeline only via like manually. Uh, and you don't have your tons uh, of one minute the grants, so also it, you did not do the horrible thing by creating the pipeline uh, that runs once in a minute. Uh, what are the cons? External service dependency. So uh, Google claims that the uh, cloud function is really resilient and it works perfectly, but there were the cases there it uh, probably did not work well uh, so, and the thing is, if cloud function will not work, you will not know this because you will uh, you uh, just will think that uh, there is no just events here. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, this is it. Thank you for your attention. That's all I have for this speech.